Hey guys, very, very good evening to everyone. <clears throat> we have 26 participants today, and I'm sure others will be joining in. So Chandan, why don't you just ping everyone as well? And uh, let's get started. Okay, so um, very interesting conversation I had with my daughter today, okay? And I must mention that to you. So I'm going to show something to you on the screen, and then we're going to take it up from there, all right? So um, let me let me share my screen. Now I want you to uh, I want you to see this. Okay, um, this is a this is a very interesting um, you know uh, stuff that my daughter actually uh, came back to came back home from, and uh, interesting because um, she came and told me that you know her teacher has actually asked her to um, you know. Create a venture, and uh, my daughter, by the way, is in uh, grade four. Okay, so she went ahead and created this. So she's written her product, greeting card, pop up cards. When can you place the order? Like FAQs. When will you get it? The day after the order. And there are two co-founders, Nilofer, that's my daughter, and Shiksha, her friend. And very interestingly, you know, it's available for free. So when when it when she came to me, I asked her a very simple question. I said, um, "So, why did you why did you put up greeting cards and pop up cards?" All right, uh, and she says, "Well, you know, that's something that I can do." And uh, and I said, "Okay, all right." And uh, why are you giving it for free? And I mean, if you're giving it giving it away for free, then who's going to uh, pay for your costs? I mean, pay for your salary pay for your uh, you know paper and pencil and color and all of that and she very very smartly said you will pay for it i said okay all right good so then it actually uh, you know it, it it sort of uh, opened up a thought process in my mind and i asked her okay that uh, what is that thing that you believe that you feel that people will need and you believe you can you know provide it so my sequence of question was what is that thing which you feel that people will need and you believe that you can uh, you know you believe that you can you can provide it so she kept on thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking and you know, she really didn't come up with an answer. So I, I mean, she was struggling with it. So I said, that, all right, let's just stay in, turn the question around, right? So I said, okay, what do you believe you can do very well, which people may also want to buy? All right. What do you believe, you, what do you believe you can do well, which people may want to buy? So she said, Papa, you asked me two questions. One is that, what do I believe I can do well? And the other thing is, you're asking me whether people, you know, which of those things people will buy. I said, yeah, all right, tell me. And she tells me that the, there are a couple of things that she will she can do very well. She can do art and craft very well. She can uh, do uh, drawing and painting very well. Okay. Uh, she can fix things which may require screws or wires or soldering and all of that you know she's got this huge box with you know i'm sure even you guys will get excited if you see that box it has batteries and magnets and pumps and fans and soldering iron and pcb and all of that and she's barely nine so she says i can fix this I said, all right i said anything else and she says you know what i think i can make projects also i'm the first one who does projects at in school, I can do projects. I said, all right. So these you believe you can do very well. She said, yeah. I said, all right. Now tell me something out of whatever you do and wherever it is applicable, which you feel people will need. Okay. And she started thinking. And she told me that she feels people may need a bookmark fancy bookmark or it's the book buying season you know in school so 
everyone's buying books and copies or they will buy in the next month two months or so and she says i can make i can make designer covers for people to you know uh, cover their notebooks and books and stuff like that she can she said she can make tassels which she can you know give it to friends and all that and send it to them she also said that she can you know make uh, beautiful borders which uh, people can use to you know decorate their uh, chart papers yeah and she says papa if someone gets a project and they don't want to do it i can do it for them and they can pay me for that and they can present the project in school saying that it is their work and does that remind you of something engineering days huh? <laughs> But a nine-year-old who's never had that experience and exposure, all right, for her, it's a light bulb moment. Because she, one of the things that she believes she's good at, she has suddenly realized that it is a marketable skill. Now, whether you are an entrepreneur or whether you are working in a corporate, at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, it's all about whether you have skill sets which can be used to produce a product or a service and given to people, or you have skill sets which can uh, position you advantageously in front of possible recruiters. Okay. Now, see, as an entrepreneur, no, our mind works like that. Our mind, you know, whether you are an entrepreneur or whether you are going in for a job doesn't matter, but our mind will work like that, you know, like an entrepreneur. What does an entrepreneur think? An entrepreneur thinks that, okay, hey, you know what? Uh, how am I going to, you know, manage the cost? You know, basically, how much money should I be asking from that? And how will I sell it? Okay, what will I produce? Who will buy it? These are those three, four basic questions which always keep on coming in our mind. And these are some things that we will go ahead and, you know, polish. So now going back to my daughter for a while, can she be an entrepreneur? Can she be an entrepreneur? And my answer, it's not a rhetorical one, but my answer is yes, she can. And you know why? Because it is not so different from the way that all of us think. What she thinks about is, you know, and very interestingly, <clears throat> did you notice what she said? You know, I'll give it for free, but I'll, you know, get you to pay for it. And what does Google ads do? Or what does, what does Google do? The consumer is someone else. Who's the consumer? You and me are the consumer, right? But who pays for their revenue? We don't pay for it. Who pays for it? Google Ads. Someone else is paying for it. You don't even know that guy. You don't know that person. So the consumer and customer, the consumer, you and me, or Google, customer who's paying for the service, all right, and altogether different service, which we are sort of by mistake going ahead and touching. Whether Google does it or Zomato does it or, you know, Swiggy does it, they all do it. All right. And uh, someone else is paying for it. Let me give you another example. You know, a couple of these examples, and it should help you know open up your mind. Then, okay. For example, education, fully funded uh, schools in a lot of places. Who is the consumer? Consumer is the student. The student is consuming the learning, right? But who's paying for it? Someone else is paying for it. The government is paying for it. Some philanthropist is paying for it, right? It's not. There may be sometimes there may be conditions attached to it. For example, the Singapore government scholarship, which says that, okay, hey, you're a great student, you come and study here in Singapore, I'm going to pay for your tuition fees, your stay fees and everything, but in return, you got to work for me for two years in Singapore, okay? That's that's a that's a, a condition attached. But the fact of the matter is, can she be an entrepreneur, my daughter? Yes. Can you and I be entrepreneurs? Yes. Can we be successful in our corporate careers? Yes. And how will we be, will we be uh, successful? We will be successful if our thought process is entrepreneurial in, in nature. And we've covered this in the previous session. So that I just wanted to start the session with. And I know that I've taken about five, six minutes, but I think whatever we're going to discuss today, <clears throat> okay, A, I want to target to, you know, uh, comfortably take you through the entire content in the next one or five minutes, okay, uh, roughly about one hour. Uh, so that you know you have some time to go ahead and uh, look at the uh, look at the uh, platform, do some stuff on the platform, 
or I give your feedback and uh, you know um, and and not get rushed. La unlike last time, and last time we were all rushing all about. Okay, all right, let's just move forward. Okay, so today's session is all about finding and validating exciting startup ideas. Now, when I say startup ideas, I'm saying startup ideas, not just from the perspective of, of an entrepreneur. As always, I'm looking at it as to how will you start up, whether as an entrepreneur or as a corporate employee. Okay, so finding and validating those ideas is what we're going to look at. Okay, so uh, for all those people who have joined in, you know, for the for the uh, first time, uh, is there anyone who's joined in for the first time? I know Chandan had put up put up this question earlier. If anyone has joined for the first time, just that person, can you put yes on the chat box that you are joining for the first time? Okay, Srikar. Nama Gupta is typing. Okay. All right, guys. It seems there are two of us who are joining in for the first time. Welcome to you both, uh, people. Okay. Uh, so, Badwani Foundation, you know, is a it has been in the in the in the field of entrepreneurship uh, with the motto of creating jobs and changing lives for the past about twenty years in about eighteen to twenty odd countries. All right, twenty thousand odd learners annually. 150 odd partners and much more work is happening in the space in, in the space of entrepreneurship, which is where you are, and also in the space of vocational education, which is our uh, which is a parallel stream that runs within the organization. Okay, so uh, but the focus for all of us is to go ahead and help create jobs, change lives, change lives for you as entrepreneurs, all right, or as entrepreneurial uh, corporate employees. Okay, so that's where we are. Uh, for all the others, okay, let's just go on to the next one, which is to say that this is our rocket ship that we had seen last time itself. We could have nine sessions. All right, session one was about exploring the exciting world of startups. Today, we are looking at finding and validating startup ideas. Okay, next time we are going to look at disruptions. Okay, but just let's just let's just hold on to your heart to our horses. Uh, let's focus on finding and validating startup ideas. Okay, uh, today is session two. Okay, and uh, which is idea and opportunity validation. Uh, are we solving problems worth solving? And we're going to look at that, you know, from the perspective of what I just shared with you, uh, you know, in terms of what my, my uh, daughter also uh, shared. Okay. Uh, a recap from last time. I hope you remember our cow and the garbage and the cars and the roads and the ground and, and all of you had spotted variety of different opportunities out there. And we had said that, you know, em empathy and curiosity is key. And I, I think I'd highlighted enough saying that, you know, dreams is what keeps you doesn't it is it, what doesn't let you sleep. Okay, and that with that, you know, go kill it attitude, and never, never give up never die attitude, which is perseverance, and empathy, which is our concern or our uh, you know, concern about our user group, our consumers, our customers, okay, and their need, the problem that they're facing, along with curiosity, which is the logical end of you know looking at uh, ideas, looking at opportunities, looking at problems, and saying that if we bring all of them together, all right, there will be an increased chance of success, and therefore. The recap is all about that empathy and curiosity is key to success. And I'd also talk to you about our offerings in the sense that, you know, hey guys, that in case, you know, you are attending the sessions, you are going ahead and filling up your startup journal, okay, which is non-mandatory, but if you do that, it opens up, uh, it opens up a plethora of services for you, okay, which could be as simple as, you know, uh, uh, giving you, giving you passes to attend fireside chats, giving you an opportunity to get uh, coached, to be uh, guided on your elevator pitch, all right, or to actually go and, you know, pitch for uh, seed venture and stuff like that. So there are a whole lot of things that open up, you know, in case you go ahead and do those various activities, which have been outlined, and which is what we will keep on asking you to do at the end of the session. 
which is your startup journal. Where do you find your startup journal? You find your startup journal on the platform. And so where is the platform? We saw it last time and we will see it today as well. Okay. So, uh, so that's, that's something which is important for you guys. So just be with that. Okay. Now next. Okay. Uh, today's takeaways. Reasons why a customer centric iterative approach is key for startups. The key words out here, customer centric or consumer centric or user centric. Number one. Number two, iterative. Nothing is etched in stone. Nothing. Okay. If you have an entrepreneurial mindset, irrespective of whether you're working in a corporate or you have your own startup, your approach will always have to be iterative. Okay. Techniques to generate ideas is what we're going to see. Process and framework to identify customer segments. Users is what we're going to see. So what is customer persona and stuff like that? We will see that. Uh, is there a process or framework to validate the opportunity? Yes, there is. And for time immemorial, people have not had a framework or a process, but they've also been successful. Yeah, yeah of course, they have been successful. But with a process and framework, their chances of success becomes better, far, far better. All right, so that's what we're going to look at. And how do you access the, the tools that are there the framework that are there, all right, and you know, for the guided support for advancing your venture ideas. So this is all that we're going to see, and these are going to be the takeaways for today, okay? So my question to you, ladies and gentlemen, where do ideas come from, okay? And when I, okay, sorry. And when I say where do ideas come from, what I'm basically going ahead and saying is that, you know, how do we generate those ideas, okay? For a moment, my screen went off. Chandan, can you confirm what you're seeing on the screen? Where do startup come I, come from? Ideas come from? That, that and, and this, is, this is the entire screen, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay, okay. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. So where do ideas come from? Okay. So that's a, uh, it's a rhetorical question. Okay. And we're going to get into it. Um, so essentially, you know, we get this light bulb moment, you know, which are like, what are the startup ideas? Okay. Um, and the idea could be, uh, so while we keep on saying that problem, uh, you know, what are the problems that the ideas are solving and so on and so forth. Of course, there is behind, behind any, every specific idea, there's a problem which is worth solving. Okay. There's always a problem worth solving. Your idea, uh, 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 you, you, but you could say that, you know, hey, what, uh, I'm going ahead and uh, packaging tea and selling it. Okay. So what's the problem that is solving? Well, me too products or me too ideas, okay, also solve problems. You are probably solving the problem for a very specific niche set of customers. You are providing them with the flavor, which probably they are not getting it anywhere. And if they're getting it, the market size is big enough for you, for, for, for the market to accommodate your, your, you know, effort towards solving that problem or to satiating that startup idea okay so it's very important that that you keep this in mind that your startup ideas can come from anywhere now like last time when i talked about you i talked about the cow right and i talked about how me and my spouse whenever we are there in the car all right whatever we see even if we are not talking to each other while driving we are actually spotting opportunities okay and now let me tell you that you know problems worth solving can only become a reality okay when you are curious and when you have the empathy okay and this picture that you saw this picture of the cow that you saw is a picture which is a common sight in a lot of places and it was this picture which actually spawned an idea that I and my spouse are currently working. You know, I, we saw what you did not see in this picture is that there is a lot of, you know, uh, uh, cow dung around. Okay. So one of the things that we started looking at is what can be done with cow dung? I mean, it's a known, I known thing, right? If it's cow dung, you make manure. I mean, there's no rocket size behind it. Okay. There's no rocket size. 
In fact, there are people who are drying cow dung, turning it into powder and exporting it as well. Okay, they are putting it as a part of a pre-packaged puja uh, thali, you know, and selling it. And there are enough and more um, entrepreneurs who are doing it. In fact, there was a time when I had a website called dashakarma.com, all right, which was planning to do that, but then I just gave it up after some time. Uh, it did not, it, it, while it was interesting, but I did not associate with that at that point of time. But what I said, what me and my spouse, we are associating ourselves with, with that cow dung, is in the form of vermicompost. And so currently, I am actually going ahead and, you know, setting up my vermicompost plant. And I'm also set, helping, you know, uh, one friend in Punjab, one friend in, uh, you know, uh, outskirts of Gurgaon, uh, in, in, uh, in Delhi NCR, and another uh, set of friends here in southern Karnataka to go ahead and start up a vermicompost unit. And I have gone ahead and tried to explain to them how can they be profitable, where can they get the raw produce from. I've also spoken to some, um, you know, bank um, employees, uh, uh, you know, uh, some banks, okay, which are going ahead and giving non-collateralized uh, debt funding for a startup idea. It's called the Mudra Loan Scheme, which has been announced and, and, and is being subsidized by the government. And while every bank is supposed to sell it, uh, won't comment on what the private sector banks are doing, but public sector banks are going ahead and doing it. And there are n number of people queuing up to go and get funded. All right. They're taking that funding. And the, the good thing is that the, the terms that they have are, ex are, are very exciting. So using curiosity, empathy, using observation that for that, you know, cow scenario, we are now going up and setting up a, a verbi composting unit. And while we were setting up the verbi composting unit, we also realized that we can do a whole lot of other things around that vermi composting piece, all right, and make that make that real estate where we are going to do the vermi composting, make that real estate even more productive. So the thing is that you may see something like the cow, or like remember the girl that we were seeing, you know, was trying to stack up stuff. But do you re are you really seeing? You know, are you really seeing? Are you really seeing the uh, the problem that is that is there, or are you seeing the opportunity that is there? Is it is it is there a light bulb moment in your head? Okay, is it solving some problem somewhere? It may be a me too product. You do not have to be a unicorn to be an entrepreneur. All right, you don't have to be Billy Bunsell. You do not have to be you know. Uh, 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 Elon Musk. You could be your own self. But are you seeing? If we are to go ahead and see, and then we come to validating the idea. Okay. So is it really an idea worth, you know, pursuing? Is the idea solving a problem? And if it's solving a problem, is it a problem worth solving? Okay. Worth solving or not? And be and to do that, you have to be, you have to do what? You have to be curious and you have to empathize. So curiosity and empathy will define, you know, problems will, will define, will, will push you to figure out whether there's a problem which is worth solving or not. Okay. And therefore the idea. Now let's look at Uber. Okay. So Uber's story began in Paris in 2008. You know, two friends were attending a tech conference and you know uh, they were all you know there together they wanted to you know uh, you know they wanted to set up they wanted to you know uh, find out you know ways and means by which they can go ahead and you know start with something and all of that happened you know that story is available on the on the net but what is important is that they during that conference they found the the, the problem that struck at them which is you know uh, it wasn't it, it wasn't convenient or it's inconvenient to find a black car or a cab quickly, you know, uh, in the city. Okay, and there, while there are multiple ways in this problem in which this problem could be solved, okay, what did they do? So what did they do? They went ahead and 
said that, okay, can we go ahead and, you know, have a hail a car uh, system by pressing a button on your phone? I mean, Hertz was always there. Okay. Uh, Avis was always there. I'm sure you've heard about those names, but th those are self-drive comp car companies and they were extremely successful. They are extremely successful. Of course, they are going into a little bit of trouble. In fact, uh, the, the Hertz backend uh, support system, which was based out of India, all right, had to be sold off. Okay. So that's a different issue. But the fact of the matter is that Uber, the problem was about the inconvenience about finding the black car. You know the black cab and they thought of solving this problem by you know the solution similarly there's another company called <clears throat> beyond meat now there are multiple companies in the world who are doing what they are doing okay but let us talk about the problem and then we'll talk about the solution and i'll tell you how it is not meat. okay so people who care about animal welfare and sustainability feel guilty while having meat. Okay. Uh, now this is globally, but in India, who are the people who don't eat meat? People who by virtue, there are three kinds of people who don't eat meat. All right. People by, by virtue of the religion, religious choice, they would not eat meat. Okay. It is okay. There are people who do not like meat. You know, I know a lot of people whose entire family is non-vegetarian, but there's that one single person who does not like meat. Okay. And some of them are in my family as well. And then, then you have the third, all right, who because of some societal issue may not be eating meat. So for example, whether right or wrong, and I'm not, not being judgmental, I request you not to be judgmental. Okay. Um, uh, what you need to keep in mind is, for example, in the Hindu system, you know, uh, uh, widows, you know, in yester years would not eat meat. Okay, uh, variety of reasons and all that. I'm not getting into it, but it's a societal issue. Okay, so they would not eat meat. Okay, now Beyond Meat was started by you know Ethan Brown, and you know when he when he was basically you know uh, working uh, you know in the in, in the corporate sector. Okay, and uh, he actually went ahead and thought about the fact that. You know, can I make a, a vegan burger, okay, uh, wherein the meat will not be meat, yet it will have the 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 texture, the taste, the look of meat. In fact, it will also bleed like meat. You know, so if you have a if you have a if you have a beef burger, all right, and if it's not well made, when you bite through it, it bleeds. The blood is still there. So he was wanting to make something which is exactly like Beyond Meat. So could they do that? Okay. So what, did, they, did they find a solution? Yes, they found a solution. So they've, they've actually made a plant-based product that looks and tastes like meat. Now, is that is that only Beyond Meat which is doing it globally? No. Licious has started doing that. In fact, you know, I am one of their uh, one of their gourmet tasters, and they in fact sent across their plant-based meat to me to get, you know, tested. Now, I went ahead and actually told them that, do you know that while we are now getting excited about plant-based meat, but plant-based meat, not called a plant-based meat, but a plant-based meat has always been there in the Indian Epicurean, you know, world. So I was giving you the example of the widows, right? So for time immemorial, Widows would use kathal or jackfruit and would make meat and would make dishes out of it in which it would taste exactly like meat. Okay. And I'm sure you would have also experienced like, you know, like what most mothers have done. In, and my mother is, is no different. She used to feed me Nutrella. All right. And used to call it meat. Okay. <laughs> and and <laughs> till this time I caught on to the idea that it was not meat. But the fact of the matter is that, is it there in India? Yeah, it is there in India. It's been there for many, many years. In fact, there is someone in uh, Ahmedabad, and I forget the, that person's name. He has been producing jackfruit-based meat for quite some time. And in fact, if I'm not wrong, I, I, I may have a packet or two in my fridge right now. Okay. Does it taste like meat? Yeah. And how has he done it? So there are very interesting ways in which they're doing it. But I'm just saying that, look at this person. Identified a problem. 
and found out a solution. The one thing which you and I we need to keep in mind is let's not fall in love with the problem or let's fall in love with the problem, not the solution. Similarly, you have practo, all right? Hard to find reliable doctors, difficult to book time with them. This was a standard issue with practo, uh, standard issue with doctors, right? And practo came in and basically they, the solution that they looked at, all right, is not to have doctors on their roles. They didn't do that. That could have been a solution as well, right? That's what a hospital does. A hospital under one single roof has all the different doctors and you can come in and get yourself checked for every every ailment, every, you know, uh, uh, every creak and every sound that your body is making. Okay. But what they did was they went ahead and created an online app that provides easy access to doctors. So all the individual doctors who are there around your neighborhood, they would go ahead and, you know, be a part of it. They would put up their schedule there. You can go ahead and book their appointment right there. It's don't have to call up. All right. Don't have to keep on waiting and stuff like that. You book it there. You make the payment there. You have your confirmation. You walk into the doctor's, uh, you know, chamber at that point of time. When does the doctor meet you? Is a very big question. That in India, you know, you never get to meet the doctor at the right time. Okay. But anyway, so you could do that. And and why why with doctors, other healthcare providers, diagnostics, uh, medicines, everything started working. Look at your story. You know, your story. I'm sure you're aware of what your story is. Shraddha Sharma, the founder and the CEO of your story, uh, you know, uh, started uh, this whole venture in which she wanted to, you know, she was not being able to figure out, you know, uh, uh, stories about startup success or the struggle that they have and how could she, you know, she, she was always wanting to uh, let people like you and me, people who want to become entrepreneurs, about the various struggles which people have had. So that was the problem that she was trying to solve. And what she did was, she didn't go ahead and she could have gone ahead and created a conference of, uh, you know, startups who could come in, televise it, you and I could see it, get inspired or blah, blah, blah. Or she could have done something like a shark, shark tank. All right. And people could have come and done. What she did is that she chose this solution that she wants. She created a website, publishing platform dedicated to founders, stories, startup journeys, funding, funding, everything. Right. So what I'm saying is, Fall in love with the problem, not the solution. And when you fall in love with the problem, you need to validate the problem. All right. Uh, whether the problem really exists, the problem, is it worth solving? Uh, and if it, even if it's a me too product, are there customers around? Uh, is there a need for it? Okay. And very importantly, do you, do you believe that you can provide a solution? Okay, so always look at problems from the perspective of what annoys you. Okay, um, so what are the various problems that annoy you? Go ahead, put it put it up on a chat. Uh, Paco, there is a question uh, from Srikar. He's uh, is asking, who publishes the information relevant to the startups? Your story. Your story is the organization which goes ahead and does it. Yourstory.com. There Your story is entrepreneur.com. IMC42 does. Yeah. IMC42 does. Uh, entrepreneur.com does. Entrepreneur very, good does. Yeah. very good resources. Yeah. Very good resources, Srikal. You can go ahead and look mm -hmm. at that. Okay. My, okay. Now my question. And please put it up on your chat box. What are, again, remember, I had mentioned one word answers is what I want. All right. Or at the most, a phrase. A phrase has two, three words. As I mentioned last time. So give me some problems that annoy you. All right. Just go ahead. Very quickly. Give me some problems that annoy you. In your day-to-day -day life, what are the different kind of problems that is really, really annoy annoy you? Yes. Very Traffic. good. Very good. Not being able to read while lying down. Good. Okay. Garbage right. collection and disposal. Unhealthy food habit. Very good. Several people are typing. I want everyone to type. Last time we had, you know, a whole lot of people and I want people to respond now. Okay, please. No proper parking. Okay. Yeah. In, in a whole lot of places. Uh, if you go to the IKEA showroom, I don't know. These guys, I think 
realize that apart from everything else, parking is a problem. Their parking is like huge. I mean, you can get lost in the parking itself. London interview process. Richard, what is London interview process? Are you saying long interview process? Long, long interview process. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Potholes. Sudanshu, you're not allowed to uh, put up your answers out there. <laughs> okay. All right. Others, others, others. All right. Let's just let's just work with that. People cutting long lines. Sagar, that does not happen in two places. One is Manipur and one is, you know, uh, Kathmandu. That's the reason why you and I, people like you and me, already feel frustrated. But otherwise, it's acceptable. Okay. All right. Let's just look at let's just look at something else. Okay. All right. So you talked about some people talked about traffic. Some people talked about bottles. Some people talked about you know a variety of things. What do you see? What do you see here? My question is, what do you see here? And therefore, what are the various solutions which come to your mind? So write that. What do you see here? Don't have to mention that. But what are the solutions which are coming to your mind? Put it up on your uh, chat box. Very quickly. We've all been talking about like, right? Look at the cow, look at the woman, look at the car, look at the crown, look at this, look at that. You know, and I told you about one of the takes that I picked it up from there, vermicomposting, and I'm actually working on that, you know, uh, stuff. By the way, in case you look at vermicomposting, and if any one of you wants to start up a vermicomposting unit, I'm sure there'll be someone around you to help you out. And if not, just ping uh, the guys at Vadwani Foundation, and, uh, you know, we could get in touch, and I could actually help you in uh, giving you a first-hand information in terms of vermicomposting. Okay. Pothole sensor for vehicles. Okay. All right. That's the first idea, a solution that is coming in. All others, just think randomly. Don't start thinking that whether you will become, you know, Bini Bansal or not. Better suspension systems in ve vehicles. Very good. All right. Just keep on coming with solutions. Do not hold your, do not hold your thoughts. Okay, of whether the solution is right, wrong, or whatever it is, just write what comes to your mind, because that is going to define something. Okay, problem, pro problem is potholes. Solution is informing the authority. Absolutely. Okay, flying cars. All right, very good, Ashi. Anything else? Thirty participants, man. Why are we getting only few responses? Barricades, use and throw shoe <laughs> shoe cover. Very good. Okay, well, they're there actually. Okay, barricades. Okay, encouraging working from home wherever possible. Because that's creating a different kind of trouble nowadays. Okay, building roads which long last. Okay, but yeah, Rajinder, one thing could be that you know that is one of the one of the best ways to reduce traffic itself. All right, na regi bas na badi ki basuri. So traffic in yoga or portals and other honge bit we'll be able to manage because we can always, you know, it'll be a bigger road, uh, there'll be more space, less density, and therefore less chances of an accident. Very good idea, by the way. Build roads which long last. And by the way, in case you want to know, you should positively look at use of geocell geo cell material for making long-lasting roads in rural environments. Geocell, G-E-O-C-E-L-L, Geocell. You put geofabric, geocell, uh, and you put, uh, you know, uh, stones and make roads, okay? Build, ro build roads with long last. So that is another idea that I am toying with, all right, to actually implement in my farm, okay? Creating a place for grievance to collectively pressure Authorities, okay, all right, very good. Change.org types, very good. So, all right, so guys, you need to keep on thinking, you know, that's the only way it can work. Now, the point is one problem, but many solutions. That's exactly what you've done. Pothole identifier app, so very good. One problem, 
or few problems, but many solutions. Now, whether the solution is the right solution or not is a different question. But, and for that, we use things called brainstorming. What, I, what was I asking? All right, given your solutions, don't judge. So that's called deferred judgment. That means you, you will judge them, but not now. You'll judge them later on, okay? Encourage wild ideas. Build on the ideas of others. Stay focused on the topic. One conversation at a time. Be visual. Go for quantity. That means you can put up 40 different solutions for this problem. And there is no judgment of individuals. Okay, IDO does not mention that. I am mentioning it. Don't judge people saying that, hey, you know what? Uh, uh, use and throw shoe covers? Hello, how will that solve a problem? No, no, don't do that. When we will evaluate the various options, we will ask Sri Harsha that why did you say so? What was the rational? And maybe that's a very quick and dirty solution which is marketable, which will solve one aspect of the problem. Therefore, in, in tier three towns and places like uh, Bangalore, Okay, where the roads are poor, you can actually go ahead and sell it. You don't know. But the rules of brainstorming have to be kept in mind. And this, the first point out here, which is deferred judgment, is the one in which people go wrong. All right, so don't don't uh, let that happen. So, but when you go ahead and do this, okay, we use something called a problem statement canvas. Okay, so what is the problem? How does it manifest itself? Now, it's very important that it's not just the problem, but what is the actual impact the problem is creating? Okay, now, a lot of people ask me, uh, I, I mean, you guys are all young, okay, uh, and I'm sure none of you are married, uh, but some of us are, and, um, you know, sometimes if you, when my wife is frustrated, if you ask her, what is your biggest problem in life? She'll say, this man is the biggest problem in my life. So, if you ask her that time, that if he's such a big problem, why don't you do something about it? I mean, solutions could be you stay alone, kick him out of the house, all right, tie a gag around his mouth, something or the other. And she says, yeah, but you know, it's not that big a problem right now. So that means it's not just important that there's a problem, but it is important as to how the problem is manifesting in your life. And whether the problem is serious enough. Now, when you go ahead and <coughs> cough, do you go to the doctor? No. When you when you go to the doctor, is the time when you're possibly not even the right phase of mind to talk. Your coughing is so incessant that you're you're gasping for breath all the time. And the doctor sitting there keeps on wondering every time, why the heck do you have to come at the last moment? Why not come when it is still manageable with one single medicine? And then you will come and complain that, you know, there's an injection here, there's an injection there, there's an antibiotic here, there's a gargling there, there's that everything. So important. And, and why I'm taking this time to explain this, ladies and gentlemen, is because the, the problem in itself is important, but in itself is not complete. Unless you know how it manifests itself. What is the frequency of how do, how often does the problem occur in a day, week, or month? Because, you know, if I'm being a pest to my wife, let's say, every day, all right, her, her desire for a solution will get accelerated, right? But if I am being a pest once a month, then she's like, okay, it's manageable. What are the root causes and, and, and impact? What are the main reasons for the problem to exist? All right, is it, you know, am I being a problem to my wife because... I can't, I can't associate with her, or is it because my habit is there because uh, that I talk a lot, or is it because you know I am very friendly with um, you know other people, or what? What is the problem? What is the main reason for the problem to exist? Or is it that she does not like people, she does not like to have you know talkative people around her? Maybe that is the main reason for the problem. 
Am I the problem anymore then? Anyway, so what is the loss or pain caused by the problem? Is there a, so that is what the significance of the problem only comes when the manifestation becomes clear, right? So it's just that because I have a problem does not mean that I'll go ahead and change it. You know, you have a problem. We have a problem with, you know, so many political leaders. Do we go ahead and actually go ahead and make an effort to change it? No. We have a problem with the roads. Do we stop coming on that road? No. We have a problem with our car. Do we change the car every day or every time there's a problem which comes up? No. Okay. So it's very important that what is the measure of the loss of the pain that is caused by the problem? Okay. Who experiences the problem most severely? You know, the customer, the consumer, the user. Now, is this a small group or is it a large group? So should my, you know, <laughs> I'm being a problem to my wife. All right. Does she see this with everyone around? Then is the problem with people around or with her? God only knows. But yeah, is this a small group or a large group? If you're going to solve the problem, let's say for the, with, you know, with the cows roaming around on the road, is it impacting a lot of people? You saw the pothole road. Is it impacting one person or is it impacting a lot of people? Okay, it is impacting a lot of people. It's not a small group. It's a large group. So why is that large group important? The large group is important because it gives you some idea or semblance that, you know, whether whatever solution you will prepare or, or manufacture the product or the service, there will be some takers at least, right? And we are right now the problem statement state. See, that's what I said, no. That at the end of the day, there are those three, four questions which need to be answered for being an entrepreneur. Okay, where will I get the money? Is there a really a problem? Who will be the customer who will buy it? And will I make money out of it? Mota Mota, you know, yehi char, paach questions hai, all right, which we are trying to look at it scientifically so that our chances of success becomes highest. Right? Okay. Now, this problem statement canvas becomes very important, not just because when you're an entrepreneur, but if you're looking for a job. What is the problem that the organization is facing which you can solve? Is it a problem worth solving? Is it the frequency high? Is are the root causes and what are the root causes and impact for it? Okay. There are a lot of movies around this thing which you can go ahead and see. I think if I'm not wrong, even Rocket Singh also had this element. All right, you should see Rocket Singh, by the way. Okay. Uh now coming to current solutions. Are there solutions which people use today? Potholes on the road. One of the solutions is a, a stronger uh, body or a stronger chasis or a stronger suspension. Now you could say I'll be driving my SUV there. All right. So I will not have any trouble. Right. But is that a permanent solution or is that a solution which will appeal to everyone? What, what about that guy who's roaming out on the Ola S1? Okay. He goes into a bloody pothole and comes out, you know, God only knows very, you know, in what shape and form that he comes out. Okay. So, so uh, uh, how do people currently solve the problem? And if people are currently solving the problem, is there a scope for solving the problem more effectively or efficiently? And most importantly, like my daughter, whether there is an alignment in thought or not, why am I drawn towards the problem? Is there something that I see as, you know, something which I can do, which I believe in, which, you know, like that guy who was, who's doing Beyond Meat, okay? He believes heart and soul that, you know, we should look for alternate solutions towards, uh, you know, meat. You know, the other day I was uh, on LinkedIn, if you're following me on LinkedIn, and if you look at my post, one of the posts, there's this lady, there was this guy who put up a picture of a black colored chicken, all right? Black meat, black uh, organs, uh, black skin, black feathers, black comb, you know, the comb on top of the cock. All right, everything is black. Now, uh, that person was asking, you know, this was a Indonesian breed. And I said, there's something called Kadaknath in India. All right, which, by the way, if you don't know, Kadaknath uh, poultry farming is very, very profitable. Uh, if your desi eggs are being sold for uh, 15 rupees uh, a piece, uh, Kadaknath eggs are being sold for 20, 25 rupees a piece. If regular chicken meat is being sold for 220 rupees, 230 rupees a kg dressed chicken, Kadaknath is being sold for 800 rupees a kg. Very short brief on Kadaknath, but coming to that. So she, I, I said Kadaknath is there. And this lady went, there, there was one of the respondents, you know, she went on to a different trip that, you know, if people like you go ahead and talk in terms of, you know, uh, uh, meats in public and all that, then, you know, uh, what about their despair and so whether right wrong that's not the point the point is that lady 
finds alignment with the idea. Right? Like my daughter finds alignment with the idea that she can make projects for others. She can fix things. She can do art and craft. She can do drawing and painting. What is the alignment? So there will be 101 problems in the world. What is the alignment that you have? Okay, that's very important. Very quickly, let's just look at this. All right, problem statement. So, Paco, yeah. Paco, on this point, I just have a very quick uh, uh, question. I mean, you may just uh, add in your point. That yeah. means somebody's alignment may come from variety of things, right? It could be the problem that they might have faced, like in the case of Practo, he faced the problem in despite of he being a engineering student from NIT Suratkal, but he faced the problem and that's how he wanted to solve desperately. Yeah. yeah. Or that it could be somebody I'm passionate about. I'm a foodie and I'm passionate about and I started like Beyond Meat. Yeah. So there has okay. to be an alignment. You're right. I mean, in case of Practo, all right, it was a problem that he faced because he could not go ahead and you know organize for doctor's appointment for his father. Correct. All right, it started from there. So that That's alignment good. is very important. That's what I was just saying. You know, that alignment is very important. Are you aligned to do that? Now, like for example, you know, you've got this idea about use and throw shoe covers. Now, Sri Harsa might be might see that as a solution because not just because it is a solution. But also because she, you know, uh, and I presume you're she, right? Because she has an alignment to that idea. All right. Uh, so he, he, sorry, he, okay. <laughs> so he has an alignment to the idea. Okay. Now, uh, Sriyarsha also has an alignment to a portfolio identifier app. You know, maybe that is the first thought which comes into the mind, not because you've seen another app, but because something which you can go ahead and create. All right. So it's very good. Good point that you talked about. The fact of the matter is alignment is very important. You know, without the alignment, I mean, kya the problem solve kar ke? The alignment hai. Right? So alignment is required. So now let's look at this example. You know, the problem out there is there are school children who are disengaged, don't want, don't want to learn, worried parents, unhappy kids, this, that. Uh, occurs across the classes, subjects daily, both in schools and at tuition centers. Basically, children are disengaged. All right. And they don't want to, you know, uh, look at that. And by the way, one side note for this, there is a Gallup survey on engaged, disengaged, and actively disengaged employees. You should read that. Find it out. You should read that. Act, engaged, disengaged, and actively engaged. Yeah. Gallup survey report on that. It's very important. If you're looking for a job, it will help you to prepare for your, you know, uh, interview and creating a value proposition out of yourself. If you are going to become a startup, all right, it's very important because that is one key element which is required by your sales team and other members of your team if you really want them to be a part of your A team. Okay, so go ahead and look at that. That was a side note. But disengagement is there in the class. Okay, coming back to this, thing. disengagement is there. You know. What are the root causes of impact? Because the culture of root is there. My daughter my God, can't get her to uh, learn tables by root. You know, she will, she took, once she took seven days of doing nothing, but just trying to remember, you know, tables from 12 to 19. Finally, her brother, her elder brother, my, my, my firstborn, all right, actually, did not teach her the uh, tables, but taught her to quickly add. What a crook, all right? So she, in turn, in, in, in the whole process of remembering, you know, a table, she's actually become very quick in, you know, uh, adding numbers. She uses that because you know, my son has taught her all of that. But, but the culture of rote learning is there. Teachers are inadequate. Teachers don't know how to teach. They don't know how to engage. Okay, in a lot of places. Uh, India, by the way, I mean, a side note, in India, if you have an academic qualification called PhD, that uh, basically, you know, uh, qualifies you to be a good teacher. Whereas teaching is a skill and PhD is all about academics. 
So we have those inefficiencies in the system. It's a systemic you know, inefficiency and ineffectiveness that is there. So who are the customers? Overall, you know, school going students, all right, parents and all of that. What are the current solutions? Private tutioning, parent teaching, coaching center, study guide, YouTube. Okay. Now I have, what is the alignment? I have always done well in school, mostly due to my own initiative. Want to see children learn joyfully. That's my alignment. Okay. I have loved school, so I can go ahead and do that. So now the question is that, so, so you need to go ahead and create an idea statement. Okay. Which is the pre-problem validation. Now, when you validate the problem, which is what we will do, you will go ahead and write stuff like, you know, uh, this, this is for school students, all right, who face the problem of the uh, boring subjects or teaching. So what is the customer? What is the issue or challenge? All right. What is the task or job, you know, while which, which they find an issue or a challenge? So while doing or, you know, understanding concepts of getting good grades, Okay, and what is the solution? So, you know, we propose a solution with real life concepts with animation and or VR VR. Okay, so why I'm saying this is because you're, you know, you need to identify who the customers are. Okay, for example, the startup idea out here is the edtech startup starting, you know, startup offering AR VR based learning that was acquired, you know, so there was a uh, organization which happened like that. Now, if that was there, who are the potential customers and users? Now, in this case, the potential customers and users, user group, students are there. Customers, who are the customers? The one who are paying for it, right? And who are paying for it? The parents are paying for it, all right? If it's something which you sell to the school, then who's the one who's paying for it? The school is paying for it. Of course, the school is paying for it, but the but at the end of the day, the parents are still paying for it, all right? Because they will charge up, they, they will hike up the fees and they will charge it up. But the fact of the matter is, the real value of that idea, okay, which has come out of your curiosity and empathy and willing to solve a problem, alignment to yourself by focusing on the customers and consumers, the real value is when you will be able to execute it. Right? So execution is important. And when you come to execution, okay, uh, as I was mentioning about the doctor, all right, when will you go to the doctor? You will go to the doctor when the pain is very high. All right. You know vitamins are important. You know that you need to take vitamin C, right? If not through, you know, and ideally through fruits, okay? You need to have citrus fruits, which will give you vitamin C, which will build your immunity because of which you will not have cough and cold. But you don't take it. I don't take it. What do we do? We keep waiting till this time we start sneezing. And then when the sneezing becomes incessant and when I'm almost about to die, I don't die, but I get the feeling. That is the time when I go to the doctor. Right. So I could have done it with the vitamins, but I go only when I need a painkiller. So validation point for execution is that whether your problem is a vitamin or a painkiller. And for whom? Because if it's a painkiller, all right, that people will be wanting to buy it more often. You know, do vitamins don't get sold? They, of course, get sold. Whole lot of vitamins get sold. But painkillers get sold more. So try to find out whether your product, your, your the valid, the point of validation is whether you are going to be a painkiller or a vitamin. Okay. So, but for that, you need to understand who's the customer. Okay. Your solutioning has to keep the customer in mind. So, for example, in case of Baiju, who's the customer? All right. I'm, I'm, it's a rhetorical question. All right. Who's the customer? The customer is uh, the parent. Okay. Now, not the student. The student is the consumer. Just to make it even more clearer. In this, who's the customer? The customer is the one who's paying for it, right? The pet father, the pet mother, the pet parent. But who's the consumer? The beautiful looking golden retriever and any other dog, by the way. Okay. So, I mean, I'm not talking about the validity of uh, pedigree. I'm not here to be, to be judgmental about the brand. All right. But I'm just saying out here, who's the customer? The buyer or the pet parent is the customer. Who's the consumer? The dog is the consumer. Now, in this, who's the customer for Google? 
not you and me. The customer is the one who is paying for the ads. Who is the consumer? You and me. Right? So keep that. Because, because Google is not a subscription-based uh, model, right? That means you and I are not paying for, the, for what we are consuming. If you're looking at an ad, if you're clicking an ad and all that, that is generating revenue for Google. From whom? The companies who are putting up their ads there. Okay? So be very clear in terms of who's the customer, who's the consumer. All right? The beneficiary. Okay? So customer, consumer is very important. Who will use our product or service? Who will pay us? And what are their needs or wants? Who will consume? Who will pay? And what are their needs or wants? Now, how will you figure that out? You will figure that out when you get out of the building. All right. And we used to, you know, very jokingly uh, abbreviate it and we used to call it GOTB. All right. Uh, so G O O T B, get out of the building. So you need to get out of the building. You cannot be doing this on the computer by your, so as to say, Google research. It cannot. You have to speak to customers. You have to speak to prospective customers who fit into that customer, you know, as we call it out here, customer persona. You need to do that, right? So get out of the building. It's very important to validate four things. All right. And you, every startup needs to have it. You also need to have it in case you are going to, you know, going, going for a job interview. Is it desirable? Ah. Uh, is it compatible? Is it viable financially? Is it feasible to be had? Now look at it from a job perspective. Are your skill set desirable? Are you culturally compatible? Are you financially viable or hireable? All right. Are you too costly or too no costly? And is it feasible to you know get you into the organization? So for example, a lot of people have liked me, but they can't get me a job because it's not feasible for me to for them to give me a visa to go to, you know, any, in, a, in another country and work. So whether you are looking for a job or whether you're looking for validating your startup idea, it has to fulfill, all right, desirability, compatibility, viability, feasibility for any startup. And the sweet spot is where everything intersects. Now, when it comes to desirability, those are customer needs. When it comes to feasibility, then we are talking about whether the product or service technology is feasible or not feasible. When you're talking about viability, it is about economic sustainability. You know, even whether whether it is economically sustainable in the market or whether you have uh, what it takes, you know, to uh, to to basically go ahead and you know give you that kind of salary in case you're looking for a job. And compatibility in terms of whether you can work with other people or not, whether you're culturally compatible or not, and that is what is known as the team. So, very simple, customers' needs, product or service technology, all right, economic sustainability, and team. What did I say when we started with? Is it really required? All right, will I have the product for it, whether I have the product or service or you know, technology around it, whether it can make economical sense or not, where do I get the money, how do I sell it, and all that. And very importantly, do I have the skill set or do I have people with me who can go ahead and, you know, be a part of my team? So these are the four validations that every startup needs, right? But in our case right now, what validation we are talking about? We are talking in terms of the potential customers or users, whether they are facing that problem, okay, which is what the idea is trying to solve, all right, and whether the problem is worth solving or not, whether the size of the problem is big enough or not whether what is the frequency of it and all of that you know we we looked at the canvas earlier and for this you need to be curious you need to be you need to empathize so curiosity and empathy which comes from the last session very important startup idea everyone will have ideas but are you being able to see the problem are you in love with the problem or are you in love with the solution so you need to be in love, in, in love with the problem but the solution that you need to look at, you need to be in, you know, alignment with the solution that you have. And that problem and solution should make sense to whom? The customers. 
And that is the validation which is required for whom, where do you need to go? You need to go to the market. So it's important that you step out to validate the assumptions that you're making. Without that, it's not going to work out. So are you solving problems worth solving? That's very important. Are you solving problems worth solving? So define who is having the problem, identify a few real, we talked about it, okay? Uh, define who is having the problem, identify a few real people to interact with. It's very important. You know, identify who are the people who will fit into a customer persona, okay? Or, or what is customer persona? We will look at that with customer persona, all right? Learn about their day, uh, about their day in the life. Ask questions, learn with an open mind. Don't go fixated with the solution. Go fixated with the problem. In fact, I would suggest be open there as well. Because once you start talking to people, you may realize that the problem is deeper and maybe a little different from what you are able to see. Yeah. So that's very important. Okay. Uh, so go ahead and do that. Okay. And I could give you examples where people went in with some thought, all right, in terms of a problem. Uh, they actually, for example, you know, with sutures, which they do the suturing in your body when there's an uh, operation. All right. The whole idea at one point of time, Beckton Dickinson was working on it to find out some sutures which can go ahead and make life easier for the, you know, uh, surgeons. And while they were doing that, they realized that actually the consumer for it, all right, is not just the surgeon, but is also the patient. And that is why, you know, someone else started working on it and they came out with soluble, uh, you know, sutures so that the whole pain of removing the sutures is, is removed. Removed. And today, so when we go in for a surgery nowadays, a lot of us who are aware of all of this actually ask that do you have soluble sutures or not? So don't fall in love with the solution for sure. When you go in to the, fall in love with the problem and be open to the idea that the problem could, you know, you could be diving deeper into it to figure out what exactly is the problem and therefore the solution might be very different. Brainstorming, don't forget. So brainstorming is an important thing that you did today. All right, idea validation, the, the canvas, all right, is very important that you did today, okay? And when you're validating the idea, okay, while that was the problem canvas, this is the idea validation questions, okay? Figure this out. Uh, are you solving problems worth solving for the right people? That's very important. Okay, so who are the right people? And for that, we follow something called the no structure. All right, the no structure is all about, you know, what are the key attributes of an individual? This is what we refer to as the customer persona. So what are the key attributes? What are the needs that they have? What are the obstacles that they are facing or options that they have? And what are their wants? So which are their expectations of the product and service? All right. This will define the customer. Now, let's say, for example, when it comes to that, you know, pedigree, okay, we talked about, but the consumer is the dog. But who's the customer? The customer is the pet parent. All right. What are the key attributes? So let's take another example, okay? So let's take the example of uh, that, that same uh, example of the, you know, uh, ARVR solution that we were looking at. Okay. All right. So, um, segment is that mother of a child in class six to 12, 30 to 45 year, urban, female, married. All right. Uh, bachelor's degree holder, working or, you know, maybe a homemaker, uh, weekend goes in socializing, active on Insta, family vacations every month. So you are defining the key attributes of the, of the, of the person. And every part of this, goes ahead and gives you more and more information. So go as detailed as possible with regards to demographics and psychographics. Okay. Then look at the, what are the needs? What are the, you know, obstacles or options that you see? And therefore, what are the wants? Engaging content, covered syllabus, improve exam scores, parents dashboard, this, that, I want all of this. These are the, these are the, this is the stuff which is, which I would want in, in the solution that I'm looking for. Okay. And therefore, okay. You, you are now, that was for the, that was for the mother. All right. But your customer is also your father. All right. So hence, and the customer, I mean, the customer segment out here, the persona out here being the father, look at the wants and uh, wants for the father, which is very different from the wants of the mother. Wants for the father, mother, wants for the father. Wants for the mother, wants for the father. All right. So they're very different. So therefore, your idea statement changes. That student in CBSE school grades, specific segment of user I'm referring to. And competing solutions, what are there? 
key functionality features which are required task job top three issues and challenges being there but what am i looking what am i adding out here is i am being very specific with regards to the segment of users and customers and i am looking at the competing solutions very clearly and i am looking at the uh, uh, the customer persona so so the couple of things that we've looked at is we've looked at uh uh, we, we've looked at the uh, problem canvas. We've looked at you know uh, the no structure. All right. We've looked at uh, the questions which we, which comes to idea validation. We looked at the customer persona. All right. Customer persona is a combination of key attributes, needs, obstacles, and wants. Okay. And therefore, we come to an idea statement. All right, which is now far more clear and gives me an overall picture in terms of who am i looking for what are the issues that i'm uh, that i'm th th that that i've identified while doing what kind of you know tasks or jobs and what are the key, therefore what are the key functionality or features which are required and what are the competing solutions that i have these five elements now these five elements will therefore all right make your startup you know journey much more mature okay so we are at the stage where we are trying to validate the opportunity and while doing that we are going step by step in terms of a focused action towards creating the product or service and launching the product or service my go to market okay so we've again we have, what we've looked at is uh, and and Chandan kindly add in case i'm missing out something all right we've looked at and very quickly let's just you know, go through that entire thing once again uh, yeah so what we're looking at is we are looking at uh, startup ideas, problem worth solving, which comes from curiosity and empathy. We looked at various examples. All right. Uh, we looked at problems. What do we see? And therefore, what are the solutions? So hence, one problem, many solutions. Brainstorming is what we were looking at. Rules of brainstorming we looked at. By which we will come to a problem statement canvas, which goes ahead and helps us identify the problem statement completely, including the fact that whether I'm aligned to that problem statement per se. And we looked at, you know, uh, coming out with a, a painkiller or vitamin, you know, and that is the point of validating. And we will validate it against the customer that we have, whether, first of all, who will use the product or service, who will pay us, who will use the product or service, consumer, who will pay us, you know, is the uh, is the uh, customer, what are their needs or want? And how, we talked about the validation which every startup requires and you would require in case you're looking for a job as well, which is that whether, you know, you understand customers' needs or not, whether you uh, have the product or the service or the technology or not, whether you have the economic sustainability or not, and whether you're, you have the team to uh, support you in doing this or not. Similarly, when you're looking for a job, you're also looking at, you know, from a from a corporate perspective, do you have all of these with you? Finally, what we are doing is we are going ahead and looking at custom, potential customers and figuring out whether they have, we are actually going ahead and solving their problems or not. And if we, we believe we are doing it, then am I aligned to the problem or not? Am I aligned to the solution or not? And if I am aligned to the solution and the problem, then I'll be able to not only solve it, but I'll be happy doing it. Okay. So are you solving problems worth solving? And these are the questions. These are the six questions that we, we, we believe that you should keep in mind. You should get out of the building. You should figure it out that whether your, the, the, the solution, the, the, the problem and solution dynamics are being, you know, uh, are being looked at or not is the solution, uh, uh, is the solution solving the problem worth solving. Okay. So, and we talked about the customer persona, we talked about key attributes, needs, obstacles, and wants. And finally, we came to the fact that this are the five elements that we're looking for while validating the idea statement. So this is how we will go ahead and validate the idea. Finally, while going out of the building, we would have figured out what is the specific segment, what are the top issues, which are being faced by doing what tasks, and what are the key functionalities required, and what are the competing <laughs> solutions, okay? Finally, we will come to this, and now I will. One second, please. And uh, what we are now coming to is we are coming to our platform, and I'll request my colleague Sudhanshu to come over and uh, take us to the platform so that we can go ahead and look at, you know, uh, 
what are those things that we need to do you have your startup journal and Sudanshu will take us to the startup journal uh and that is how all right Sudanshu, you're there yes Paco thank you thank you so guys let me share my screen Some of you already know uh, where to go exactly, but still, let me share uh, the screen so that it will make it easier for you to directly go to the landing page. Guys, let me know once you start seeing my screen, give a thumbs up uh, on the chat window. Yes, we are able to see. Great, great. So guys, I would request each of you to go to my journal section, which is next to the community uh, tab. Uh, you'll see this session to March 28, 2023. There is a hyperlink. So you have to click on this session to journal question. Click on the link. You can expand the window by clicking it here. You'll see the question is in front of you. My journal session two ideas and opportunity validation. Are we solving the problems worth solving it? So a window like this will open it up. If you're not able to see this window, you have to simply click on uh, this particular link. Another window will open up. Otherwise, most of you will be able to see this one. So first box is you have to fill your name. So quickly start uh, filling it. Then the next question is choose a problem opportunity that you have been able to identify in your campus or any other area you feel strongly about what is the problem how does it manifest we have discussed already discussed this thing uh, during the session Paco multiple time mentioned about um, this thing and a lot of you were already posting uh, your uh, real life problem challenges uh, on the chat window so you have to do the same activity here just uh, mention your problem here So let me share the link as well if uh, you guys are uh, uh, not able to land to this particular page and for your convenience i'm going to post uh, this link on the chat window so you can click on the uh, this particular link and you can directly land on this page i've already posted the link there and let's quickly start doing this because it will take some two three minutes of our time there are multiple questions coming up on uh, on the same Do pro, uh, give me a thumbs up on the chat window so that uh, it will help me understand whether you are able to reach out uh, to this page or not. Have you started uh, doing the activity or not? Hi guys, we need your confirmation whether you are able to. Yeah, she is typing. I'm looking for others. Vivek Bharti. Yes, as he says. Sagar, yes. Vishal, you guys are very pretty much active on the window, able to access. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Okay, now I see. Can see the multiple thumbs up. Yep. Maybe we can go to the next question. So the next question is contact and uh, context and consequences. When and where does the problem occur? What is the loss pain caused by it? <laughs> oh, Vivek has already submitted. <laughs> Man, you are so fast. <laughs> we are not going to publish it before the session. We are going to publish it during the session now. <laughs> It's good that people are exploring the platform. You guys are checking out all these um, uh, sec uh, sections. That's good. But yeah, do wait for the session to get over because obviously a lot of things we discussed during the session which help us in framing these uh, answers. So, this so the is next the question, question is root question. causes. Yes, sorry, no, just a second. The second question, context and consequences. Guys, this is 
related to the problem that you have identified on which context and what consequences that you identify that that is a problem that is what you need to mention it over here yes over to you um, the context that's... is very important uh, guys the context is very very important without the context all right uh, you will not be able to figure out whether you are creating the solution for the right set of people or not. The context is very important. Huh? Don't forget that. Yeah. Yeah. Sudhanshu. Yes, Sudhanshu. Yeah. So if you are done with uh, this, uh, we have the next question, root causes. What are the main reasons for this problem to exist? Let me scroll down it a little. So we talked about the customer persona, right? In the no model, okay? Which is the, uh, you know, key attributes, all right? What are the need, what are the obstacles and what are the, uh, you know, wants that they have? So who, who experiences this problem most severely? Who are the customers who are facing the problem or the consumers who are facing the problem? Yeah, sometimes the consumer is not able to talk. So for example, the dog in the pedigree does not talk, all right? But feels happy and wags his tail. All right, but the customer is the one who's feeling very sad, you know, that my dog is not, not feeling great or not enjoying the food. All right. So you need to look at it from that perspective. That empathy element is very, very important. Yeah. So everything is about the curiosity and empathy. Root cause, curiosity is required. Customer user, empathy is required. All right. Current solution requires both of them. In fact, the intersection of all those four, you know, cycle circles that we had, the sweet spot. Yes, Sudhanshu. Yeah. So the next uh, few uh, questions are in front of you. Customers user who experience this problem most severely. The next is current solution. How do people currently address this problem? And specifically, oh, current solutions are, okay. the specifically current solutions are typically the existing uh, solutions or existing that could be your competitor. So those who are providing some kind of solutions to this particular problem. So you need to identify that because it's not that there is no solution at all. There would be some solutions and you are identifying still there are some gaps. So you need to provide that. So while you're talking about this, Chandan, I must mention two things out here. Ladies and gentlemen, keep this in mind. One is that, you know, someone asked me on LinkedIn a couple of days back that, uh, you know, uh, in case you're on LinkedIn, you can always check it out. I've in fact made a post around it that there could be some solutions which are being produced for the first time, which the customer group or the consumer group might not have ever, ever imagined it. What do we do in that case? Okay, so I will not touch upon that right now. Go on to, uh, you know, if you look at my la latest LinkedIn post, not my response post, you will find that uh, response there. So it's very important. And you should also keep in mind that there, sometimes when you say, how do people currently address this problem? It could be addressed by, you know, something else altogether. So for example, enjoying cricket, people current, how do, how did people do it before, you know, uh, IPL and before uh, being shown in movie halls, they would actually do it on TV or they would go ahead and sit in a, you know, uh, in the stadium. Then came viewing cricket matches and football matches in uh, bars and restaurants and then came the movie hall they also started airing it but at the end of the day it's that you know they, they want to use, utilize that time so you when you look at how do people currently address this problem don't as i said don't be focused on just what is right in front of you expand your mind you know you will find that there are other ways in which the problem might be getting resolved and also we are going to cover that in our when we are going to get into the uh, marketing and sales and marketing session yeah we're going to cover this the gtm strategy and all of that's right yeah yes tagar ashish and others please fill all these um, questions the bharti has already submitted it vague has already submitted it others please uh, drop a text on the chat window so that will help me in understanding how many of you have already submitted it so that we can go further 
So the next question is feedback poll. Let's click on it. This won't take more than five, seven seconds of yours. So how effective did you find the session two today to help you in generating ideas and understanding the process problem validation? These are the five options you'll see in front of your screen. Not at all effective, slightly effective, moderately effective, very effective, effective, extremely effective. So select your option. This is not a time consuming process. It will hardly take five seconds of yours. So the session two general and feedback poll, those who haven't uh, given and uh, submitted their answers, do post it after this session. Let me quickly take you to the seminar session page, in, uh, which says about the upcoming event. So tomorrow we have our third event, third session. So do click on the RSV at uh, RSVP button. If you have already RSVP for it, add it to your calendar. This will give you the automatic alerts from Google or uh, Apple Outlook, whichever you are using it. So here you will see all the details of the upcoming session. So do all RSVP for all these events. A lot of you have already done it, but a majority of you haven't still done it. So do click on the RSVP button. You'll see this uh, My Resources section. So those who haven't uh, attended their first session, you can go to session one under the session material section. You'll see the uh, small detail agenda. Apart from this, you'll see the sessions recording here. We have already uploaded the recording here. For today's session, those who have joined us a bit late, the recording will be published tomorrow morning and the session recording will be uploaded on the platform as well within 24 hours. And you can see the quick recap of the session, a brief about the upcoming session. And apart from this, additional references are already here. So you can go, go through and check it out. This is for the people who haven't attended the first session. So let's come to the session two, which is happening right now. We have added a couple of additional resources for you. Don't forget to check this out. So these are a few of these uh, small videos. One is let's brainstorm. Again, it's a short two, three minute video. Then next one is mind mapping for ideas. Third one is a case let. These are some small short videos for you. And then there are a few ready to use templates as well. There are templates for idea elevator page, my entrepreneurship workbook, problem statement canvas. I request each of you to download these free templates and fill this up. We are going to ask you to submit it very soon. So before that you do your exercise. Then you will see this take action section. Here also you'll find multiple templates here. So one is brainstorming activity template. The other one is problem statement canvas. Third is customer persona template conducting customer interviews. All of this is here just for you. Don't forget to spend a quality time here on the platform. Apart from this, those who are new, we have a section called members here. So you can see the list of the all the members here who are part of this particular cohorts. You can see all these guides. Uh, so if you face any query, any doubt, you can reach out to any of the di uh, these guides. We will respond to your query during the business hours. You simply have to click on in front of the uh, guide's name. You, you'll see these three dots. Click on it, click on chat, and a chat window will open up. You can directly reach out to it. If you want to reach out to any of the participant or your facilitator for any of your queries, you can similarly reach out to uh, in front of their profile. You'll find this uh, three these three dots next to the profile. Click on the chat window. A window will open up, and you can directly reach out to the, that particular participant. Apart from that, you have you must have seen this community tab. We keep on posting new stuff here on a regular basis. You'll see these four polls, posts, news. All of this is going to be in your community feed. So mm -hmm. if you want to post anything related to entrepreneurship, any uh, related to any of your learning or any of your doubts, you can post it here. Okay, guys. So that's it from my end. Uh, over mm -hmm. to you, Chandan. Thank you. Yeah, um, Echo, over yeah, just one second. There are one last thing that I would like to mm -hmm. disclose sure. the session with. Yeah. So guys, summary of the session till now. To a hammer, everything looks like a nail. All right. Uh, you can look at it from both perspectives. For an entrepreneur, everything looks like an opportunity. Or, you know, you could also look at it from the perspective that, you know, you don't have to be a hammer that you have to beat every nail, all right? You need to find out what exactly is the thing which you can nail and what is which is the 
problem that you can solve and that you feel aligned to it okay get out of the building often guys boys and girls sitting at home in front of your computer will not make you an entrepreneur all right vitamins are important don't make a painkiller and don't boil the ocean that means don't try to solve everything yeah try to solve or work on an idea which you can manage okay uh, you so that's what you need to focus on questions or comments have been coming in we actually need chandan to you know do a ask me anything kind of a session which i think we should be able to do it uh in probably another two three sections right so let's focus that's on that it. yeah so if you've taken your gt an entrepreneurship style survey great if not kindly go ahead and do that write a your startup journal you know idea statement customer persona engage with the community because that's where the learning is going to happen i can only initiate stuff for you all right at the end of the day you know khan sir and khan academy don't create great students you know students create great students by interacting with each other do that okay watch the videos and case studies and all that next session is going to be on disruptions leading to competitive advantage what are disruptions what is the misnomer around disruptions what should you focus on and stuff like that you know we're going to look at that tomorrow in the evening and we are going to start using it when we go on to uh, the session wherein we will create the value proposition okay so i'm really really looking forward to you think about it what causes disruption what disruptions cause disruptions my statement what disruptions cause disruptions all right and uh, we shall see you uh, tomorrow